get $3 off every order at PlayAsia by using the code CENSORED. Salutations, Mojo from Censored Gaming here. Vagrant Story, the 2000 PlayStation action RPG made by Square, was a title praised by critics and still has a cult following to this day. The game is set in the city of Le Monde and follows a knight named Ashley Riot as he pursues Sidney Losterot, the leader of the religious cult Mullencomp. In combat, players chain various attacks together to deal massive damage in a style akin to a rhythm game. Vagrant Story is also considered something of a landmark in video game localization. The website, US Gamer, conducted an interview with localization editor Richard Amtower and translator Alexander O. Smith and managed to ask them various questions pertaining to the localization of the game. This video will be going into detail of the most prominent questions and answers from the interview. When asked about the culture of Square's translation team during the early 2000s, Amtower explains that he, Smith, and Square were based in different parts of the world, frequently communicating via email to one another. He also says that the translators had the final say on the text and how he was something of an advisor, building relationships with the team and hoping they would trust his feedback. Smith clarifies that the Square localization department was still very early in its own development, saying they hadn't entirely found the best practices for localization at the time. He details this further, recalling things such as non-native English speakers being in the head of translation and how the localization department was, in fact, just tacked on to the IT department. Smith compared this to being a bit of a wild west at times, but the two men state it was all very passionate and driven. They were also questioned on the original Japanese script and the team adding their own take on the writing. Smith says that their spin partly came from the reaction to the pseudo-medieval European setting of the story. He states that there were some things that English tends to do that the Japanese language can't, citing imagery and wordplay as an example. He references dialogue found within the game, in which two soldiers are talking about magic. In Japan, the dialogue is fairly standard, with these two men simply talking about how one can use magic. Over in the West, the dialogue is changed to fit the setting better in the eyes of the team. The dialogue uses words such as I and ye. The interview eventually gets into how dense the script was in comparison to the game's length. The two were asked if they believed fans may have missed any possible subtleties. In response, they began talking about the room's names and how the Japanese names were so long that they didn't have anywhere near enough space to directly translate them into English. This allowed them to translate the names much more loosely, and so they paid homage and added all sorts of references to mutually beloved things. Noticing how Matsuno, the Japanese producer, liked to make references to Queen songs, they decided to add in some Bajos references, for example, which also kept with the game's gothic feel. Some more examples are the room names, Mindshaft, where someone spent all their strength for the one they loved, which was changed to The Passion of Lovers, and Stairway where someone danced a dance of joy after drinking cheap wine was renamed Bacchus is Cheap. However, generally speaking, the localization didn't stray too much from the original script. When asked whether they inserted characters' various quirks, such as Merlot's bringing up rare wine, Smith recalls that this scene was also in the Japanese version. With the exception of the room names, Japanese producer, director, battle designer, and writer, Yasumi Matsuno, deserves all the credit. Lastly for this video, the two were asked if there were any major changes to the script that they would like to talk about. Smith details that a character refers to Ashley's crew as terrorists in the original script and that he himself wrote around it without clearing it up with the team. He explains that this struck him as anachronistic in a bad way and believes that he would still make the same choice if he were presented with a situation like that again. Viewers can find the full interview, which answers questions such as if a certain line in the game was a reference to manhood and what exactly drew Smith and M Tower to the project over at US Gamers website. This has been Mojo and I hope you all have a spectacular evening.